What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about training to failure versus stopping a little bit shy and whether or not it makes a difference on muscle hypertrophy. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment Oh, the algorithm. So we're discussing a new study that I really, really like where they were looking at either training to absolute failure or stopping one or two reps shy of failure. What I really liked about the study was several things. The first thing is they recruited men and women and in the analysis, they looked at them separately and combined to see if there were like sex-based differences that really weren't, but it's nice that they included both. The next thing is it was a unilateral design meaning each person served as their own control because when they were executing the protocol, one leg from the individual they would have on the failure protocol and the other leg they would have on the repetitions in reserve protocol or RIR. So you don't have to worry about genetic differences affecting the outcomes because each person is their own control. Now, what did they do? They had them do two resistance training sessions per week for eight weeks. And these were very well-trained people. On average, they'd been training for over seven years. I think the range was from like four to well over 10 years of resistance training. That is very well-trained subjects. They randomly selected one leg to go to failure and the other leg to stop shy of failure. Training to failure is pretty straightforward. On leg press and leg extension, they had them train until they couldn't do any more reps. On the other leg, they had them stop two reps shy of failure on the leg press and one rep shy of failure on the leg extension. And they did this for eight weeks, two sessions per week. And they validated their repetitions in reserve and they showed that basically the people were pretty darn good at estimating how many repetitions in reserve they had left. And repetitions in reserve is repetitions from failure. So an RIR of one means you stop one rep shy of failure. RIR of two, you stop two reps shy of failure. What did they find after eight weeks? Well, they found that both groups increased the thickness of their quadriceps with no differences between groups. And what's also interesting is the volume load, which is the reps times the number of sets times the weight was basically the same between both groups. And the total repetitions were very similar between the groups. Now this might seem a little bit weird to people because, well, if you're training to failure, aren't you gonna do more reps than not training to failure? But when you consider the overall context of the training program, if you are doing multiple sets on an exercise and you take the first set to failure, you're gonna lose more reps on each subsequent set than if you stopped a few reps shy. And that's exactly what the researchers saw. There was a greater repetition loss in the leg training to failure versus the leg that was stopping a rep or two shy of failure. Now, one interesting thing they did show was that the individual muscles actually hypertrophy differently in the different legs based on whether or not they trained to failure. So the vastus lateralis, which is the outer quad muscle, hypertrophied a little bit more in the group that was going to failure, whereas the rectus femoris, which is the, the middle muscle of the quadricep, hypertrophied more in the group that was stopping shy of failure. Now, this is only one study, it's only eight weeks, but it suggests that perhaps there are regional-based differences when you train to failure. Now, what is my take home of this study? What is my practical recommendation based on this study and the other studies that have kind of examined this? My practical recommendation is you probably don't have to train to absolute failure if you wanna maximize muscle building. You probably need to get pretty darn close though, within a couple of reps. But if you are going to choose to go to failure, the best way to do it is probably to stop a few reps or a rep shy of failure in your initial sets. And on the final set of an exercise, take that to failure. Because now you're not getting the downside of the repetition loss from going to failure on the first few sets. You're able to complete more reps at the end but you're still getting the benefit of training to failure if there is a benefit in terms of regional-based hypertrophy like we talked about. And I think you're probably better off choosing exercises that don't require quite as much kind of mental load or neuromuscular focus, like for example, like free barbell squats or deadlifts or something like that. I think you're better off doing things like hack squat, leg press, leg extension, where you can really just focus on the muscle and moving it through a range of motion 
and getting close to failure. You know, things like free barbell squats, for example, it's so fatiguing just on your respiratory system, to be quite honest, that a lot of times it's hard to reach failure because you're just gasping for air. Now, if you guys aren't sure what to do with your training, that's why I created the BioLane Workout Builder. It takes the guesswork out of your training and for a low monthly fee, you get access to all my evidence-based training programs that span the gamut from beginner to advanced and are available for any kind of equipment availability. Even like minimalist home gyms we have programs for. And if you have a full access to a gym, we still allow substitution of various exercises that are equally as effective based on how we've grouped those exercises. So you can choose exercises that maybe you prefer or find more fun. And so we take the guesswork out of the reps, the sets, the intensity in terms of proximity to failure, but we give you the flexibility to choose exercises that you have access to or prefer. So if you guys are interested in that, click the link in the description and I'll catch you next week.